ready to launch. <laughs> ready to launch this. Ready to launch, let's go. <laughs> We're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are news up, new space generation. <laughs> Making news just for you. It's May 24th here in Seoul, I'm Sinyun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Niall Song. Hi, everyone. And Cheska Dying Hong. Today's an exciting morning. It is a very <laughs> exciting morning. And both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As it's a very exciting morning, it's also a very historic day for South Korea. We'll be sending our homegrown rocket, Nuri, up into space, and it's the third launch of its kind to mark this significant day we have prepared a special live cross with Kim Xiong, a regular panelist on our show. Now Xiong is currently at Naru Space Center in Kohung Jeollanamdo province. He's going to be walking us through the atmosphere just hours before the scheduled launch. Hello Xiong. Good morning Yan. All right, I hear it's you. It's a beautiful morning on the Yes. I hear you're yes, at Naru Space Center in Kohung, in... right? I am, I am. Uh, we are at the south, southern end of South Korea uh, in South Cholla province uh, in the city of Kohung, uh, where the Naro Space Center is located. And it seems like a beautiful day today uh, mm. with full sun uh, out in the, in the clouds. No clouds. The wind is minimum as well. And I think we're ready for the launch as well. All right. And I hear that you drove almost the whole night. It took you like five hours to go all the way from Seoul to Kohung, but it doesn't seem like you're too tired. And is that because everyone there seems to be excited for the third launch of Nuri? Everyone's very excited. I've drove across the town coming all the way here. There are some uh, some uh, road banning as well as well as uh, uh, ocean space banning because of the launch. But we have seen a lot of excitement around here in the town as well. It was about over 500 kilometers drive. It took me about five or six hours to get here. Uh, but it was worth the drive and it was a pleasant drive as well. The reason why the Nara Space Center and the rocket launch is in Kohung is so that we don't get any sort of in environmental uh, blockages and things like that for a successful launch of the rocket. All right. And you know, as you mentioned earlier, I hear that the weather is great there. It looks amazing. And hopefully we'll see Nuri blast off into space on schedule. And could you tell us the significance behind today's launch set for later in the evening? Yes, I mean, uh, the Nuri, third launch of the Nuri rocket is significant because we already had a series of Nuris, the first one being launched in 2021, uh, the second one in 2022, but they only had the payload of dummy satellites or performance testing satellites. You see, the South Korea space program has been going back into the 1990, when the first rocket was developed uh, named the KSR. The KSR series is one, two, three, going up to around 2009. Uh, we had a, not 2003 actually. We had another one uh, developing the narrow rockets starting from 2002 until 2013, which also had the capacity, but it was limited to cooperating with Russian technologies as well. Now this third narrow Nuri launch is significant because we're trying to send eight satellites total to the Earth's orbit. One of them is the next generation small satellite 2, Nexat 2 as you know, uh, which is the main satellite developed by KAIS, Korea uh, Aerospace and Science Technology Institute as well as seven others, three of them being from private companies. This is significant because it's the first time we're having a private public cooperation uh, for the space program. The three companies uh, who's, who was engaged in making these satellites were Lumir, uh, Cairo Space, as well as uh, Justec, which are sending one of three of the seven cube satellites into the space. The remaining four are weather satellites developed uh, by the Korea Astronomy and Science uh, Technology Institute, right. which uh, is called the SNIPE as well. 
I see. And you know, it's hours before the launch. Officials are going to determine whether they can go to schedule around 2 p.m. I hear. But if it does go based on schedule, we'll see duty launch into space at around 6.24 p.m. But at the moment, what's happening? Are there any updates to the original schedule? What are the final checkups that's going in process right now? Yeah, so about noon last yesterday, we had the full uh, readiness, all the preparation happening. Uh, it was docked for refueling as well. Uh, all the maintenance, technology maintenance has been taken place, uh, all done yesterday. We were just expecting to see if there's any unexpected weather changes, but it seems to be nothing of that sort. Uh, we have a lot of crowd here from all different uh, media companies as well. The island, the bit of the island where the narrow space center is on, is actually not open to public civilians. Mm -hmm. You need one of those little badges to get in, uh, whether you're <laughs> media or related personnel. <laughs> so, I mean, it's quite a privilege to be standing here. Uh, the part you see behind me right now is the model rocket. It's not I the see. actual rocket. The actual rocket site is about two kilometers away from where I'm standing, uh, and it's due to the safety issues. We will see the launch taking place around 6.24 p.m., as you said, but we might have a gap, plus or minus, half an hour added to the original launch schedule. Right, and as you mentioned, it does seem to be a very special day for you, as we are seeing, you know, you with your special badge there. Thank you so much, Xiong Lai from NATO Space Center. Thank you. All right, now we're going to be including our panelists here in the studio to talk about this historic day, and Nell's going to start us off. Why don't you tell us what's different for today's launch compared to the previous two nudie launches in the past? Mm, and first and foremost, this is so exciting to see that Xiong's there in yeah. person, and he actually mentioned one of the points. Uh, if there have been two prior launches, launches prior to this, but the biggest difference is that this time they are carrying a eight multi-purpose satellite, which means mm. the ones before this, they were kind of just dead way trying to just test out how much they can carry mm -hmm. but these are usable satellites and it's oh. actually going into space and the director for the rocket development actually said this and I thought this was so funny um, he said think of it like a taxi it's not complicated but for the first <laughs> time we have passengers in the back That's we're a great in analogy. business we're in business yeah taxi going yeah. into space <laughs> but yeah let's take a look at the schedule for the duty launches that's mm -hmm. coming up all right. Yeah, so for the past two launches, there was the first one was October 21st in 2021, which was launched at 5 p.m., but it was unfortunately a failed mission. Mm. However, the second launch, which was in 2022, June 21st at 2 p.m., this time it was successful. And finally, today's launch, which, as you know, it's May 24th mm -hmm. today. And Xiong mentioned again, this is this evening at around 624 mm -hmm. with a possible 30 minutes plus or minus uh, gap in, in between. Uh, but this entire launch schedule would be, you know, completely successful if they managed to continue down the line 10 successful launches. I see. But as you can see on the chart there are multiple ones that are planned for the future starting in 2025 all the way up to 2027 and best of luck. <laughs> so from 2021 to 2027 mm. we're seeing South Korea rapidly add so much fuel into mm. the aerospace technology industry but how far has South Korea come in developing such related technology and Cheska why don't you briefly go walk us through the milestones we've achieved so far. Yes so since 2010 South Korea has invested almost 1.8 billion US mm. dollars mm. into aerospace industry and what's particularly exciting about this third launch is that once compared Completed, mm -hmm. we now become the seventh country in the world mm -hmm. to have a aerospace taxi. Lucky <laughs> Aer number seven. Lucky number seven. I like yeah, that. I like that space. It's a good place to start. It is. Yeah. It is. Lucky number seven that carry, uh, has an aerospace vehicle that carries one ton satellite. Mm -hmm. So what's meaningful about this is that the technology is completely homegrown yes. and domestic. But I want to talk about the further implication of this a little bit later too. But it is also exciting because the aerospace industry has a high hurdle. Right. But mm. we are now becoming independent. Mm. And this is a stepping stone for the capacity for us to further develop. So this mm. is a very exciting moment for I'm all so of us. I'm so proud. I know. So you proud feel that. Right. Korean. And with this being news, Shen, let's discuss how developments like Nudi and sending a homegrown rocket off into space would affect our generation. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on this, guys? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's enabling a lot of dreams. I'm so excited right now. Um, <laughs> and it's 
for the future of Korea, you know, the youths who are interested in this industry, Absolutely. who can, you know, dream. They have they have a place to really make this happen. Mm -hmm. And having on our own versus going abroad to study makes a huge difference. It and does. it's this huge privilege, as we mentioned. But this could also mean a lot of foreign students coming into Korea to Absolutely. study. And I'm looking forward to that kind of exchange. Mm -hmm. All right. What about you, Cheska? I mean, I said it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We are news space generation. Yeah, if you notice. <laughs> yeah. And the media has used the term new space to mm. so and so call this generation that is upcoming. And it's particularly exciting for our generation because, as we mentioned, now we have the capacity mm -hmm. and the independence for more students and even private sectors to engage in this aerospace industry. Mm -hmm. And Xiang mentioned, but this is the first time that a private corporation mm -hmm. partook mm. in the launch of a rocket and even right. some of the Kais students as mm -hmm. I hear were able to participate in the project mm -hmm. and this is this is so exciting because yeah. aerospace has a very high hurdle mm -hmm. due to cost yeah. technology mm -hmm. and just the opportunities in general yeah. right. so I hope this kind of becomes a launch pad ah. for more opportunities I, for I, our love generation. I love it and the old space era was when more the government and the public mm -hmm. sectors would actively put in a lot of efforts to see major developments mm -hmm. but the new space era is giving more opportunities to youth and students like us to develop a dream and really shoot for the stars. Oh, yeah. All right, and we're now going to hear from a student who's actually studying aerospace engineering here in Korea right after this. Before wrapping up the first part of our discussion, we mentioned the positives behind South Korea fueling more investment in its aerospace technology. We also talked about how this paves the way for people in our generation to develop related dreams and career paths. And South Korea has been doing a relatively good job on this, as we're seeing millennials and Gen Z from other parts of the world come to Korea to learn more about this industry. That's why we have a live interview ready with Dennis Groshev, a research intern studying aerospace engineering at Keist University. Now, Dennis is originally from Kazakhstan, but he flew into Korea just to study this. Great to have you on our show, Dennis. Pleasure to be here. All right, so Dennis, could you tell us when and why you decided to come to Korea to study aerospace engineering? So I came back in 2018, right after finishing my high school education. And there were actually two reasons why I decided to choose Korea as my place for bachelor's education. First is that such large companies as Samsung or Hyundai were initially founded in Korea, mm -hmm. and they were they're so known and huge around the world. So it sounds very worthy of studying aerospace engineering here as well. And also, more technical reason is that the very first South Korean rocket, Naroha, was actually in part developed by based on Russian design of Angara rockets. Mm -hmm. And I learned it back in high school and mm -hmm. thought that the homegrown Korean design might also sound interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and compared to Kazakhstan, where you're originally from, or other parts of the world, it seems that you've done your research in where you want to do your education. And what part of Korea's aerospace technology and education stood out to you the most? Uh, so for me, it was like, the most influential part of decision was because Korea emphasizes heavily on practical knowledge. So it, mm. it made the internships, lab applications, experiments, while, while in Kazakhstan or Russian universities, it is more about the fundamentals and theory. And uh, in my personal opinion, when you're trying to build such a complicated thing as a rocket, where anything can go wrong, you should do more practice with it first. And Dennis, we mentioned it here in the studio, but to use the pun launch pad, I think this third <laughs> locket launch is quite exciting because it's providing a launch pad for private sectors and mm. students like yourself, for the public to engage more actively. So how does this affect or influence students like yourself to get into aerospace industry? 
So I was thinking quite a lot about it ever since the first launch of Nuria rocket back in 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tend to think that the successful launch of this rocket will pave the way for more student satellites like CubeSat, which can be developed on lab level, even by bachelor students. Oh. And also in international sense, for international students in particular, it gives hope that you don't need to be a huge or uh, super, super state mm -hmm. to mm. develop your own rocket program. Like, um, for example, it would be impossible to think 50 years ago that such a small nation could develop its mm. own rocket program in such a short time span. But now right. it's possible, I guess. Okay. Right, for sure. And the last question I have for you is, what are you most excited about when looking at Nudie's third launch later in the evening? I'm very well aware that KAIST developed the main payload, a next generation small satellite. So you must be very proud to be a KAIST University <laughs> student. Any plans you have later in the evening? Of course. Well, I am most awaiting of this launch because of its payload, actually. Mm -hmm. There is a satellite called NextSat 2, which was developed completely by Satellite Research Center located in Kai. So I'm most excited to see the success of this mission. And later in the day, I think at 5 or 6 p.m., we as a whole department of aerospace engineering are going to have a joint watching party for it. Aww. in our department building. <laughs> That's, nice. That's really nice. I hope we have our own party while oh, we no. see the launch live. All right, thank you so much, Dennis. <laughs> thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. All right, and as Dennis mentioned, today's such an exciting, historic day for South Korea's aerospace development. And let's hear what our global viewers had to say and whether they were as hyped up as we are about this exciting <laughs> moment in history. Take a look at the screen. Cyrus John said, I hope this will be a stepping stone to launch more rockets. And check this out, Andrew Nellen said, New, new horizons, re reaching beyond. Oh, I love <laughs> that. Right there. Oh, that's really and fun. Yeah. And Leon Teo said, wishing for a successful launch of the space rocket Nudi and that South Korea can prove it can have the capability to send their own rocket oh, into space too. Lovely. Now, why don't we talk about our final thoughts? Are South Korea's constant efforts to excel even in difficult areas, you know, like this aerospace industry, motivating you in any way? And how do you guys feel about engineers and mm. officials in this field never giving up? Oh. Hmm. I think as a Korean, I'm like I mentioned, so proud that people are excelling in this, mm. making mm. this new field for more people to join right. in. And not just in space, but when we look in different areas like entertainment, like K-pop and sports, we see so many Koreans doing so well. It kind of motivates me to be I don't know, make my country proud as well. <laughs> I should do my best. And, you know, it's lovely to hear from Dennis and a lot of foreign students coming in. I really hope that we Aww. become a nation that can connect others through <sighs> this technology. That's, that's, that's really nice. Hmm. What about you? You know the saying, shoot for the stars mm -hmm. and aim for the moon? Yes. I think we're becoming very close <laughs> to actually landing yeah. on the moon. <laughs> yes, with Tanuri. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, you know, speaking with Dennis today, it became very clear mm -hmm. that space industry is definitely an industry Industry where we are launching mm. into a space where there's no jurisdiction or sovereignty. So it's open to everyone mm. and anyone. And the fact that we are able to do with a domestically homegrown technology to lower the hurdle for students like Dennis, or even, as Naya mentioned, international cooperation. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very exciting collaboration for mm -hmm. the future. And I think today's launch of all launches is very historic and worth noting because we're adding more of the private sector into mm -hmm. it. We're right. seeing more students like from mm -hmm. KAIST, Absolutely. also private corporations like Hanwha Aerospace join hands to see yet another groundbreaking moment. And hopefully we'll see that with Nudi taking on its passengers as now <laughs> mentioned it's commercial great satellites up into space but until then thank you for everyone for watching that's all we have for you and we'll be here every day from 9 30 to 10 a.m korea time bringing you more topics young people are talking about special thanks to nal song no problem and cheska dine hon the place is always mine thank you all right thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you tomorrow we are new, new generation, generation.